So how long can you keep your fish in a bucket? It's probably longer than you'd like to think. As with most things involved in fish keeping, it depends on a lot of different factors. The first thing you want to consider, and it kind of ties into a second thing, is the amount of time that the fish needs to be in the bucket, and of course how big the fish is. If the fish is bigger, as in like a discus or an angelfish or something of that size, then you can't keep a fish that big in a bucket that's about five gallons for much longer than a day or two. If the fish is really small, like a neon tetra or an ember tetra or a chili rasbora, then you can keep more of a fish that size in a small bucket that's say like five gallons. The bigger the fish, typically the more waste is produced and when you're dealing with a small finite volume of water, you need to be really careful. This would be in comparison to say 20 or 30 ember tetras which are really small and don't produce as much waste, those total number of fish aren't gonna get anywhere close to the waste production of a couple angelfish. Another big part of this is just the overall stress level of the fish. A big fish in a small space like a bucket is obviously not gonna be as good as a much, much smaller fish. So size does matter when keeping fish in a bucket. The next thing you wanna think about is how long are those fish, whatever they are, are going to be in that bucket. If you're just transporting fish from A to B, they're gonna be in a bucket in the car for 30 minutes, an hour, a couple hours, then it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to think about it too much and you don't need to do a lot of extra things to your bucket to make it safe, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. But there's another situation that I think is pretty common and that is when you're moving, like I did recently, or you're tearing down a tank to set up that tank again or to maybe set up another aquarium, you need to have fish out of the tank and you don't have somewhere else to put them, so you put them in a bucket or a tub. In this type of situation, the fish could be in the bucket or the tub for a day, two days, a week, maybe something happens, your setup uh, isn't going according to plan and you don't have anywhere to put the fish and it's, you know, all of a sudden it turns into a month. Hopefully that doesn't happen. What do you do, what can you do to that bucket or that tub to make it as safe as possible? And how long can you keep those fish in that bucket for? Is there a time limit? Here's my beautiful bucket once again. I've turned the filter off just because I didn't want to annoy you with that waterfall sound. I know not everybody likes that, but here is what I have going on here. The perfect bucket. Well, it might be the perfect bucket. You guys tell me down in the comments after you watch this video. Don't tell me right now. Finish the video first. In this bucket, I am housing about 25 to 30 ember tetras. So a small fish, we classify them here as a nano fish. Very small, they're hard to see in this bucket because we have all these plants in here. We're gonna talk about that in just a second, but that's what we have going on here. We don't have any large fish in here. We don't even have medium sized fish. I would not put uh, 20 rainbow fish of any size in this aquarium other than something that's maybe a dwarf rainbow. But I think you get the point. The smaller the fish, the better, and the longer they're gonna be able to survive and even thrive in that bucket environment. On this bucket, we have live plants, we have a light, and we have a small hang on back filter. So we have pretty much every component except for a heater, which we don't need because we have a heated room. So everything about this bucket is making it pretty much a small aquarium. We just can't see through it. If you're just transporting fish or they're only gonna be in their bucket or tub for you know two, three days, maybe even a week, you don't need to do any of this stuff, especially if the fish load is small and light. But because I knew that these Ember Tetras were gonna be in this bucket for a week, two weeks, then that turned into a month, I knew way back then that I needed to set this thing up in a way that could house them long term. And so here are the things that we did to make sure that that would happen. Real quick guys, just wanted to let everybody know that you crushed it last weekend with the Legit Fish Food promo, shipped out a bunch of orders, got food to a ton of new people. Thank you very much for your support. So the 17% off discount is no longer, but we still have a bunch of these improperly sealed bags that we're offering for like 40% off now, okay? We're running out of the community food, but if you wanna try some of this stuff, for less money, now is still a really good time. There are still some pretty big coupon codes that you'll have to find. They are on the website. One's gonna pop up at you right away. If you're a first time buyer, you can get like 23% off, I think it is, off your first purchase. And there's gonna be a lot more to come. I'm trying to figure out a better way to get the people that watch these videos a pretty good deal on the food long term especially. So we're working on it. I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. But anyway, that's enough of this. Let's get back to the video. Let's start off here with a really easy one and that is the amount of water in the bucket. So we make sure that it's almost up to the top 
enough to run our hang on back filter. If we let this just evaporate down to, you know, halfway or less, then we're dealing with those fish only being in a couple gallons of water and that's not good. The hang on back filter is of course the crown jewel of this whole thing. It's what continues to keep the aquarium safe even though the fish are producing waste. They're not gonna get into trouble with ammonia or nitrite. So using a pre-existing hang on back filter, a small one like this Azu is really good. The only issue is that if you don't have it filled all the way up to the very outlet of that filter, then you're gonna hear quite the waterfall. We also have, you know, just the run of the mill biomedia in the back with a little bit of purigen as well. The next thing you're gonna notice, other than the light, the light is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think we need to dive into that. But the other thing you're gonna notice is the plants. This is really important for a couple different reasons. The main reason for the plants being the comfortability, that's a hard word for me, of the fish. We don't wanna just put them in a blank bucket with nothing to hide in. This is gonna make them a lot more comfortable long-term. The plants that I have in here are just like some leftover Anubias and other slow growing plants that don't need a ton of light. So in the beginning when I didn't have the light on the tank, it was no big deal. And remember those plants are not ones that are gonna be really strong at absorbing any waste in the tank because they're such slow growing plants. And that's why we have the added floating plants on top, the sylvinia. That's a floating plant that is gonna do a phenomenal job at absorbing any ammonia, also heavy metals that might be an issue. And it does give you kind of a buffer. Um, like for example, if you don't have a filter that is super set up and ready to go, maybe one that the nitrification isn't perfect on, then that gives you that extra buffer and I think it's really important. I think the floating plants also give the fish a little bit more of that comfortability. If you have jumping fish, the water level's really high, then those floating plants are gonna help discourage that, especially if you have a lot of them. And that's basically the whole story with the bucket. It is essentially a nano aquarium with about, you know, four and a half gallons in it. And that's it. A question somebody might have about the bucket is the fact that the fish are in a bucket that is plastic and we know plastics leach things and plastics are bad. I don't think that there's any issue with that here. I've never experienced an issue doing this. Um, I guess there's no way for me to ever know if it was the plastic causing a problem, but people keep fish in plastic totes all the time for super long periods of time. Goldfish keepers keep goldfish sometimes in big 80 gallon stock tubs that are plastic. I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about that. I think, you know, if it's safe for potable water, then it's probably safe for the fish. What else? Bucket life. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a bunch of stickers on your bucket so you don't lose your bucket or somebody gets it mistaken for being their bucket. Luckily, we have the world's largest collection of fish stickers that you can check out and get to add to your fish bucket if you have to transport or keep your fish in a temporary home for a little while longer. Another thing you're gonna wanna do from time to time, if this turns into a long-term situation, is remove a little bit of the mulm, kind of as you go when you do your water changes. I probably should have said this earlier. Uh, you're gonna wanna do the normal kind of water change system that you would do on a normal aquariums. I don't think you really need to do water changes that much more frequently if you are running a hang on back filter that's established, but it's something that you're probably gonna wanna do because whenever you get into that bucket, it's gonna kick up a bunch of stuff a little bit differently than a normal aquarium would. I like to do it with just a straight tube. I take a net and I make sure the end of the siphon is going into that net. So if I accidentally suck up a fish, then we catch them in the net and we don't accidentally lose them in that other bucket. The bucket to bucket system is one of my all time favorites. And that goes to say that, uh, you know, if you're doing frequent water changes, you probably don't need the filter. The filter is kind of overkill, but it does add some aeration to the bucket as well. And it's something that I think is probably just the smart thing to do. But using the filter does give you that peace of mind and you can go a little bit longer if you need to. So what's the deal? Two days or two years in the bucket. Um, you don't wanna keep your fish in, in buckets for two years. I think, um, you know, you're gonna to wanna to get them out of the bucket as fast as possible. These fish, they've been in here for too long. We're gonna finish this up. We're gonna get these fish out and into a tank that is basically the same size as the bucket they're in now. But I think they're gonna be a heck of a lot happier to be able to see this outside room even though it's super messy and they probably have a better view from in the bucket.
So there you have it guys, we got the fish in their new tank. I think they very much prefer this over the bucket. So I'm glad to get them in there finally. Um, upon first glance, it does look like visually there's probably a few too many fish in here. So what we'll probably do is cut them in half, not literally, but we'll take half of them out and we'll put them into another nano tank here that we set up very soon. Long story short, buckets kind of have a little bit of a stigma around them. If you are doing it right, then it's not really that big of a deal, but at the same time, you don't want to keep your fish in a bucket, certainly for two years, that's way too long. We don't want to have the bucket be a permanent home. It's meant to be a useful tool in fish keeping, especially when you have too many fish tanks and not enough time. So anyway, thanks again for watching guys. Hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next one.